Oh. Hello, can everybody hear me? I'm popping on a little early to make sure all the tech is working since this is my first live. Oh my goodness. Um, awesome. Portugal, Issaquah, awesome. Colorado, I see you, Al. Nice to see you. Renton. All right. Uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Yeah, right. Awesome. This is so fun. It's so great to see you all. Great. Loud and clear. Okay. Let me know if the audio is off. I got a new mic. So awesome. Um, during the tutorial, um, I will mostly have it on my artwork, but I'll be here on the side if you need anything. Like, no, let's see. Let's see if we can find the right one. Do, do, do. Nope. We'll figure it out. Um, that's me. Hi. <laughs> From SoCal in Texas. Okay, let's see. We've got one, one minute to figure it out. Ah, all right. Here we go. So, hi. Welcome. It is nine o'clock, bright and early, and I am so excited to welcome you to the Fall for Watercolor art class challenge. We are going to be painting an acorn today and we're going to be talking about the wash technique, which is like the fundamental building block for watercolor. So if you don't know me, hi, I'm Kate. I'm a watercolor artist and my goal is to make watercolor feel accessible, doable, and fun, and spread the word of watercolor to everyone around. Watercolor came to me in a uh, very tough time in my life, and it has brought me so much joy and hope and love and community and all those things. So thank you all so much for joining. We're going to go over the watercolor wash. We're going to go over tips and tricks. I'm going to show you three different types of washes and go over some common troubleshooting areas. And then we're going to paint an acorn, which is so fun. And if you are following along, it means you're probably aware of the Fall for Watercolor Challenge. But if you're not, every October, as in last year and this year, uh, we do a Fall for Watercolor Challenge where we paint one fall-related painting every day. If you're interested in more details, you can find there should be some links below, but if not, it's on my Instagram page and uh, Facebook and all that jazz. And during this challenge, you try to paint one painting a year or a day, <laughs> a year, one painting a day. And the goal last year was to paint it in three minutes. So very low time commitment. This year, you can make it what you want. I am personally trying to do a little bit more of my own personal style. Uh and playing with some ideas that I've been having, um, but you can do like a limited palette or whatever, just get your paints out. That's the goal. So without further ado, um, thank you so much for joining. And let's, uh, yeah, if you just wanna pop in the comments, that way I can keep track of who has attended so I can enter you in to win prizes. Uh, let's do it. All right. Um, and please feel free to ask questions as you go. All right, so the watercolor wash, I'm just getting a little notes up, make sure I don't miss anything. This is the uh, most basic building block in watercolor. So a wash describes when you cover an area of your watercolor paper and that wet part is your wash. And so let's just make a wash. I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet. And oh, I'm feeling this color right now. It's like this beautiful pinky red magenta. Okay, so if you have paint, feel free to do this or just watch the demonstration. Um, so this is a wash, okay? Everything in this is still wet. I don't know if you can see, it's shiny. You see that reflection. Um, and this is going to be, while it is wet, we can still manipulate this area of paint. So we'll get into it on some of the other days, but for example, washes are super fun because when the paint is wet, you can drop in all kinds of colors and they're just gonna go and make some beautiful arrangements. Oop, is that not focused? Let's try that. 
There we go. Um, so that is the basics of a wash, but there's so much more to know to get an exceptional smooth wash. Oh, thank you so much. My palette is from Sylvan Clayworks. Um, and I love, love, love her stuff. I'm using May Mary Blue Paints and Princeton brushes. And I believe I'm we using, wearing, <laughs> um, Canson, yeah, Canson Montval watercolor. Okay. Oh, you got a little drip. So that brings me to my next uh, point is the amount of water is going to be a key component when creating your washes. So too much water, the paint is going to be sliding all over the page, not enough water, you're going to get really dry uh, coverage, and it's going to leave these little brush marks. Can you see that? Let's see. Do you see how you can, it's kind of brushy in through here? It's not a very smooth wash. Um, so when we're creating our wash, first we're gonna talk about a flat wash, which is creating a wash that is very even and smooth. So step one, you're gonna pick your brush, all right? So when we're doing a wash, you can do one that's very small like this, we use our tiny, tiny brush, or you can do a huge one that covers almost the whole page. So depending on the size of the area that you're trying to paint will uh, depend on your brush. So the bigger the area that you want to cover, the bigger the brush. And different brushes have different levels of absorbency. Um, so like this one is Princeton Neptune. So Neptune is Princeton brushes brand that is very like, mm, so juicy, holds a lot of water. And so I love using this for my washes. Okay. Um, if something's a little bit drier, doesn't hold as much water, it can still work. It's just going to take a little bit more effort. Okay. So we've picked our brush. We're going to be doing a medium size wash for these little exercises. So here I have a round size eight. This is the Princeton Select round brush. This is a great workhorse brush that should cover you for most of the things. Um, step two, we're gonna load our brush up with water. So when you're doing a wash, you're gonna wanna already have like a wet brush to be working with. Um, so you're already soaking the brush through, kind of like blanching, I guess. Is that what, what you call it when you soak? the thing in water before you fry it. So we're going to blanch <laughs> our brushes. Not really because it's not hot, but um, we're going to soak our brushes and then make our paint concoction. So in order to get a nice smooth wash, you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice paint puddle that's mixed up that's going to have enough paint to cover what you need. Probably should have cleaned my palette off before I started this. It's getting a little messy, but here we are. So as you're preparing your paint puddle, this is basically the combination of paint and water. If you're totally new to watercolor, you can activate your paints just by wetting them. Oh, hi from India, awesome, so exciting. So just gather as much uh, as you think you're gonna need. This looks like plenty. And I don't know if you can tell, I'm gonna try to bring this up closer. Do you see how it's like swirling really nice it's not like this here isn't swirling, okay? This is, we want it to be nice and swirly, but not so much that it's slipping all over the place. Like if it's exploding all over your palette, you've got too much, but this is a nice kind of uh, special mixture. <laughs> um, the mint gardener, Sarah Simon, she calls it her secret sauce. And this is, this is the secret sauce level that you want. Um, if you don't follow her, highly recommend. Okay, so we've got our right size brush. We've loaded our brush with water. We've got a nice amount of paint to go from. The reason why you wanna make sure that you have your paint already mixed up is because once you start painting, you have to keep going. So if you let it dry up on your page as you're doing your wash, you're gonna have some uneven drying lines and something called a bloom where the water pushes back, yada, yada, yada. We won't get into that right now, but just for now, make sure you have a hearty little pile. This should do it for the exercise that we're doing. Okay. 
Oh, that's our little acorn. Okay, let's get to our flat wash. So for a flat wash, I have a ton of moisture on my brush and I am going to start on the left. If you're right handed, this should work. If you're left handed, go ahead and start on the right. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull that paint across the page. And as it starts to feel a little dry, just grab some more paint and pull it across the page. So I'm not like brushing all over the place to make it nice and even. I'm just giving it a nice kind of wiggle here. Okay, if there's an area that's maybe a little bit lighter, like let's say I got more water over here, I can always go back in and drop more color and even that out. Okay, so this is a nice flat wash. It's pretty even all the way through. I know you can, there's like light reflection. But um, there we go. You can see how the color is pretty even throughout. So you might notice that the paint is dripping off to the side. So if there's a little bit too much extra paint, you can always kind of clean your brush off, dry it off on your towel. I'm just wiping it off on my towel over here. And I'm just sucking up a little bit of that paint with my paintbrush around the edges. This is just if you have a little bit too much water on there, this can help make sure the paint isn't floating all over the place. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you might see, let's see if I can bring this closer. Um, do you see some texture in there? That texture is not because of an easy uneven coat of paint. It is because of the texture of the paper. So some watercolor paper is smooth. That's called hot press. And some watercolor paper has some ridges and that's called cold press. Um, and cold press is going to have some bumps and some texture. And so that's okay that you're seeing the texture of your paper through the wash. You also might see some granulation or like some little, um, almost like little tiny pieces of colored sand. That's the pigment of the watercolor that has broken apart um, and isn't binding, but it doesn't mean it's bad paint. It just means that your, um, your watercolor is granulated and that can be a really cool effect, especially if you're painting some organic shapes and stuff like that. Okay. How are we feeling about the flat wash? Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. Um, for our gradient wash, we are gonna be moving from a dark color, or well, let's start with a light color to a dark color. So the way in which we change the, the darkness or lightness of a watercolor paint is going to be by adding water to make it really light and adding more paint to make it really dark. So first I'm going to show that by doing some little tiny boxes. So we're going to start just hardly any paint at all. This is mostly water. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little box, just a little bit of water. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit more paint. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker in my water mixture. I'm going to pull a little bit more paint over to that. Get kind of a mid-tone layer. Just start grabbing paint from the well. The well is like the little, little circle that holds the paint in my palette. Okay, getting darker now. I'm pretty much just going straight from the well. And you see how it gets <clears throat> darker and darker as I add more, um, more paint to my paint puddle. So what we're going to try to do with the gradient wash is create this transition smoothly from light to dark so it's one continuous strip so we're going to start with just water and you might want to so rinse your brush off real good kind of tap your brush on the edge of your water cup i'm even going to tap my brush just lightly to the top of my towel and i'm going to start with water i'm just going to do like one or two little lines here okay and then I'm gonna grab the tiniest bit of paint and I'm gonna add a few more lines. And once again, I am 
pulling this paint over to the side, to the right side of the page from left to right. Again, if you're left-handed, please feel free to do this opposite of what I'm doing. Okay, this was a little bit too much paint, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush, just kind of wiggle it in there to get a little bit more of a smooth transition. Okay, let's add a little bit more pigment here. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. And if you notice, there are some lines that form where you had some of the transition between grabbing more paint. You can just kind of tap it with your brush, like a little damp brush. So clean your brush, get most of the water off, but you can just kind of tap, 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 and that's gonna help get the paint situated around. It's gonna just kind of break up that line. So we've gone from very light to very dark. So I love to use a gradient wash when I'm wanting to have really subtle shadows or in petals or things like that where the color is gently transitioning. Um, this is a really great technique to use uh, for shading. Um, I use this all the time. Um, flat washes, usually I use at the beginning of a painting just to get the white off of the page so I'm not just staring at a white page of paper. Um, it's way less intimidating that way. Um, and then let's get into the variegated wash, okay? Oh, hi from Spain, welcome. Oh my gosh, so all over the world, this is so cool. Okay, so for a gradient wash, we are gonna move from one color to another. So I'm gonna do from this magenta to a blue, so we'll have a nice purple in the middle. And the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna start with our boxes again. Okay, so here's my nice magenta here. All right, and I'm going to just add a slight bit of blue. I think I'm gonna use this blue. Mm. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna clean that off now that I've activated my blue. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of blue and add it to my magenta pile over here. Okay. So you can see it's just a little bit more purpley. I'm gonna take a little bit more blue, add that in. Okay, now we're gonna get somewhere in the middle here, mix between the two. We've still got our nice swooshy special blend of paint and water. It's still nice and flowy. Okay. And I'm just gonna actually bring a little bit of pink over to my blue side, because we're getting close to full blue. Okay, and then let's just do full blue. All right. So now the goal is to move from this color to this color smoothly across the page. So I'm gonna start with my pink or my magenta, excuse me. Okay. And I'm going to add just a little bit of that blue to my brush. We're going to drag it across the page. I'm adding a little bit more blue every time. I'm not really rinsing my brush in between because I have enough moisture on my palette um, to get this transition. If you need to add a little bit more water to make sure that you're that your blend, your paint puddle is smoothly flowing, go for it. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue just right on top here because it's, whoop. Okay, so now I'm rinsing off my brush because I added a little bit too much blue. So I'm taking a damp brush. We're just gonna wiggle that line. Wiggle that line. All right, now we're getting into almost all blue. Oh gosh, I'm gonna run out of room getting kind of luxurious with this. All right, add a little bit more blue to this end to really darken it up. We have a nice, gentle, soft little wash. Once again, we're having a little puddling here, so I'm drying off my brush and I'm just gonna suck it up here. 
with my brush so we get some of that excess moisture off because when that dries, it will leave a little kind of puddly blob. So I'm just getting that out of the way so we have a nice, smooth little wash going on. Okay. Is the live not working? Can you not see it? Let's see. Folks on Facebook, are you able to see the live? If you don't mind letting me know, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. YouTube folks, can you see the live? I'm just gonna check on Facebook, make sure everything's okay. Let's see. It looks like, it looks like it's still working. So, oh, working on YouTube, okay. Uh, Facebook folks. Okay, cool. It looks like we're good. So Jennifer, maybe check Wi-Fi or something on your end. Um, let me know if you still can't see it. Okay, so we've done our nice little reference sheet here. And now let's get into our acorn. So to start off, just, I really like to just put a color on the page. Okay, we're going to do actually all three of these washes with this acorn. I love starting to just get a color on the page so that I am not faced with a big white page. So I'm going to mix up some brown. I have some burnt sienna here and I'm going to add in a little bit of this indigo, I think. Just a touch. I like that, but I think I want it a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna add, um, I think this is New Gamboge. And maybe just a little bit of this red. Just want a nice like golden brown here. I think after this live, I'm definitely gonna go take a little, <laughs> give my palette a little bath here. It's getting kind of nasty. Um, and this is a pretty big area to cover. So I think I'm good with my size eight but you could totally use a larger size. Let's add some yellow ochre. Okay, I think this is good. Actually, let me show you the difference. So I'm gonna just go ahead. Oh, you just see the welcome to art class image. Um, Jennifer, maybe it's showing the beginning of the live instead of the, the rest of it. I'm not sure. Um, Cause that was up at the beginning. So maybe it just, maybe there's a play button. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying on my paint. Nice broad strokes. When you're using a round brush, you can really push flat with your brush. And that's gonna use the belly. Instead of going on the tippy tippy tip, we wanna use like the big fat belly part of the brush. So um, I'm gonna show you the difference when I use my larger brush here. All right, there we go. See how that just makes the progress <laughs> a lot faster. Um, all right. So I just want something really light here. We are not going for very dark. We're just getting that intimidating white off of our page. I like to start really, really light so we have a lot of room to build. And remember when we use the lifting technique on the sides of our piece? I'm actually gonna use that right here. We've done a nice flat wash. Oops, I forgot the stem. Um, and I'm gonna just lift a little bit right here to make a nice little highlight on our acorn. Okay. So I'm brushing it on my towel in between. And the reason we're able to do this is because this area is still wet, so we can really lift off some of that color. And I'm just gently evening out this wash here with a slightly damp brush. I've re-wet my brush and we are pulling the highlight there. So that's called lifting. We'll do a whole lesson on lifting one of these days. I know it's on the schedule, but that is gonna be our first layer of the acorn. All right, so 
Now we're gonna let this dry. Um, I am going to use my hair dryer to expedite the process. So if you have um, sensory feelings against the hair dryer, um, plug your ears. Okay. Ready, set, go. Okay, so one thing that I want to note about using a hair dryer is, can you see this little line right here? Let's see if I can focus that. Can you see that line? It, um, do you guys see like a line through the middle of the screen? That little focus line, or do you not see that? I wonder. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Um, that line right here is a drying line. Oh, you do see the line in the middle of the screen. Okay. Let me see if I can adjust that. I don't think we need that. That's annoying. Uh, let's see. Thanks for bearing with me, y'all. I am new uh oh uh oh hold on let's try that again sorry for the technical difficulties y'all how do i get rid of that oh okay plug it back in Let's see. Almost there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can. Okay, so you can see the side angle. Once again, we have the line running through it. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get the top angle instead. All right. Camera. Present. Extra camera. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me? Sorry about that. <laughs> Let 
We're back. Uh, you see the side angle. We're going to add this guy to the stage. Have this be the main image. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Are we good? All right. And now we don't see the line, hopefully. Woo! Okay. So now that this is dry, we see this little line here. Um, and that is because when we are using the blow dryer, um, it can push the paint to and fro, um, creating some harsher dry lines. So if you have the availability to allow it to dry naturally, great. <laughs> um, if you don't, then a hairdryer works well. Just kind of make sure you're going far back and easy does it. Um, always good to take a little drying rest break though. Okay. We've done our flat wash, my goodness. Um, I'm going to mix up a little bit more of my brown because we're going to be doing a gradient wash to create the shadows. So I've got my, I think this is, I don't know that that is burnt I think it's like Venetian red or something. Um, okay, so we've got a little bit of that going on. I'm mixing up a dark blue, I think it's called Fajian blue, I don't know. Um, like a little bit of yellow ochre and you can see the top view. Great. And if you all want a side view, let me know. I can toggle that too. Um, so this is going to be our highlight. So as we do our gradient wash, we are going to do medium, dark, light, and then get darker as we get to that side. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab some of our paint. And I'm using my size eight now since I want a little bit more precision here. Now I'm just adding water and I'm gonna smooth that out. Okay, and now that we're past our highlight, I'm just gonna do water over the highlight. Okay, oop, now I'm adding some more of the darker color, and then we'll get the really dark color over here. Really saturated. Okay. And you might want a little bit more um, darker light in certain places, like under this little acorn cap. Probably want to drop in some color, and since our paint is still wet, we can totally do that. Okay, and I might add just a little bit more dark over here. You can see this area right here. Let's switch to this one. Can you see this line? It's because it's already dry. So I'm just going to add a little water to kind of even that out. Wiggle it around. It's not beyond repair. Right. And I might even add a little bit more blue to make this darker to really darken this edge right along here. So this is a pretty juicy little wash here, maybe a little juicier than um, I needed, but I am okay with that. I like that it's going to give me a little bit more time to work with it. Um, okay, so somebody has asked, what color do you recommend or are they all good? Um, they are all good. Um, <laughs> they're not all good, but um, I think any watercolor that you have access to is a good watercolor. There are really expensive brands um, and those can be really awesome once you're ready to take your art to the next level. But if you're just starting out, like Crayola even does the trick, you know, the, what we use like as kids in art class. My personal favorite brands are, um, I've been really into May Mary Blue recently. Um, Windsor and Newton and Daniel Smith are probably like the big kahunas that most people use. Um, I just got some Da Vinci paints, but I haven't used them yet. Um, but I like I, I like trying new paints. Um, there are also a ton of small businesses that make paint and that's what they do. Um, so definitely just 
you'll you'll want to just kind of try some. I have a bunch of blog posts on how to try out different paints without totally breaking the bank because it can get expensive. Okay, so now we're going to do something a little wild. So we'll learn a little bit about this more tomorrow. But when we're doing washes, if you don't want the washes to like combine together and have that water mix and flow, you're going to need to either let it dry first or you are going to want to leave a little line. So since I'm feeling impatient, and I'll give you a little preview of what we're learning tomorrow, we're just gonna leave a little line. So I am going to do just the tiniest sliver of white, or not, it's not white because we already painted the base, but tiny sliver of area that is not painted between these two shapes. And that is going to allow me to do a wash in both of these spots without having the two mix into each other. And if they were to mix into each other, um, I might actually do that so you can see what happens. So if I were to have them connect, you can see, let's see if I can get the top view again. I think I might be able to see it better from there. Let's see. It's pretty subtle, but you can see that some of this lower color is filling and spilling into the top. And some of the light, it's lightening up here because that color is redistributing. So if you're doing a wash and you are doing several washes next to each other, just make sure that you either wait for it to dry or leave a little bit of distance. I keep forgetting the stem. All right. There we go. Okie doke. So we've got our little acorn. And we're going to let this dry. If you have any more questions, please let me know. All right. And let's see. I'm going to use my hair dryer. So if you all have... Uh, you want to cover your ears. Now's the time. I'm going to try to blow dry this so we don't leave any drying lines, but we'll see. All right, we love it. So there are a couple ways to tell if your painting is dry. Um, yes, yeah, so somebody is asking, do you ever spray your watercolors first with water? Um, yes, so when I'm painting, um, if I'm using all of my colors, if I feel like I'm gonna use all my colors, I can, um, I have a little split spray bottle right here and I'll just spray it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, to activate all my colors, but today I knew I was just going to be using a couple, so I didn't need my whole palette wet. It actually allows me to kind of mix my colors without them getting too, um, <laughs> using this messy palette without it getting too commingling, if you will. Okay, quick, quick coffee, coffee moment. Okay, so I told you we're gonna do the variegated wash. So something that I like to do is where our highlights are, you can add like a yellow. And then when where the low lights are, you can add a blue to kind of bring that into the background. So we are going to do a variegated wash where we um, use a little bit of our new gamboge. And I'm gonna keep it really light. And I'm gonna start here just to bring it into the sunlight. Okay, imagine the sun is hitting it. Okay, now I'm gonna start adding uh, Well, so this is interesting because I don't want it to turn green. So I'm gonna actually just add this here, kind of even that out, and then we'll add blue in a second layer. So I guess that's not really a variegated wash. I guess we could do, you do like a little bit of a red. 
So I've done my yellow there and I'm starting on the edge with a little red here. Sometimes you don't think things through until you're right there and you're like, just kidding, that's gonna make green. So I'm adding a little bit of red, cooler red, just to kind of cool that down. And you'll see I'm doing this like a little bit on the fly. It's not as precise as the variegated wash that I did where I really distinctly matched the colors and made sure it was like a very gentle flow because this is nature, so it's not gonna be perfect. And, you know, sometimes you make mistakes, right? <laughs> um, so here I've added some nice yellow. I don't know if you can tell the difference between the top and the bottom, but it really creates a lot of depth. It looks shiny, it looks warm, it looks like ready to party. I'm gonna actually add in a little bit of this purple. I'm kind of feeling wild here. I just, I'm feeling playful. It just seemed like a good little shadow color. I'm adding a little bit of shadow here under, under our little acorn cap. I think I'll wait on the top. Um, but as I was saying earlier, and I totally lost my train of thought, hello, ADHD. Um, there are a couple ways to tell if your painting is dry. Number one, look at it. So if there's water on the page, if it's shiny, do you see how that's shiny? Um, it's still wet. So if you look at it and you're like, hmm, I am not sure, it looks dry, but I'm just not sure. You can hover your finger over it and feel like a little fairy whisper of cool air. Um, if you feel that little fairy whisper of cool air, then it's still wet. So that's the water evaporating as your paint dries. And then if you're still not sure, sometimes it can look dry but if you touch it and it's cool, like this part actually is still a little wet, it's cool. And so I know that that part's not dry. And the reason why you wanna wait for your paper to be totally dry before you add on the next layer is because if you add on a second wash that to an area that isn't dry, you are going to then add that color to your layer that you're already doing. So like in this case, we just added yellow and we want to add some cool blue shadow, but we don't want it to turn green. So we're going to wait for this to dry and then we can add the blue. Okay, let's get the time is of the essence. So let's get our sprayer um, and here we go. Not sprayer, sorry. Blower. So I'm going to show you the side angle again. Um, do you see how my paper is starting to warp a little bit? So part of that is the heat gun, but the other part is, have you ever dropped your book in the bath? Um, just me? Okay. Um, but if you drop paper in water, it's going to wrinkle up. So obviously we're putting water on this page, right? It is called watercolor. So as we put water on the page, even though watercolor paper is meant to hold up really strong, um, it still will buckle and warp with a lot of water on there. So one thing you can do is tape your paper down on all the edges. I'm feeling wild today, so I'm just going to kind of hold it down with my fingers. But if you're working on something very, you know, precious that you don't want to mess up, I highly recommend using some painter's tape. There's a couple different recommendations that I have um, in my supply list and the link in my bio. Uh, but this can be tricky. Once it starts to warp, it can be tricky because oh, that's not dry all the way. Um, then the water, when you're doing your big washes, is going to flow to the lower pieces, right? Like water flowing off of a mountain, right? It's going to flow to the lowest ground. So here too, when we have like it's really poofy right here so the water when we do our wash is going to actually go to the perimeter of that area and 
that's okay um, in this case, especially because that's actually, we don't want a ton of color on our highlight. So I'm gonna roll with it and I'm gonna actually dry this a little bit more. So ears plugged, please, if you want. Doing overhead again. All right. So now we're gonna just add a little bit of that blue. And I'm mixing it still with some of the brown from our acorn color. Um just to kind of keep that essence or whatever. Um and our deepest shadows are gonna be right under the acorn cap. and along this side. Okay, so I'm gonna wanna make sure I work quickly because I don't want this line to dry. So I'm adding in where I want the shadow to be, at the bottom too, right? And then I'm gonna start working in with just water. As we get into our acorn here. And I want to make sure my brush is really clean with water because I don't want to get any of this blue color on my highlight. Okay. So as I'm looking at this, I'm not loving how this is wiggling around here. So I'm adding in some more brown Maybe I did kind of like that red. Maybe let's add in a little bit of that red purple. And I'm just dropping this color in and then I'm gonna kind of smooth that transition with my damp brush. Like here, this line is way too harsh. So I'm just gonna use my damp brush to do, 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 do. Even that line out. Oh my gosh, my edges are so messy today. <laughs> All right, uh, the handheld dryer. I got mine from Paper Source. It is just an embossing heat gun. Um, any little dryer should work. All right, so let's get working on our cap. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow here just because the cap is a little bit lighter. Oh, it's a little more yellow. Okay. And once again, we probably will have a little shadow and highlight situation. Um, so I'm gonna try to leave it pretty white, like on top, kind of right there. So I'm painting around, doing my wash, a pretty flat wash to start. And I'm gonna add in just water in that area. So if you're noticing that you're painting, water is getting pretty gnarly um, when you're wanting to get clean water over an area for a highlight, you'll probably wanna change your water. Um, okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna add some of this darker color a little bit on the bottom and on the sides that are not getting as much of that highlight. Maybe a little bit behind the stem there. Okay, so see how we're manipulating this wash once it's already in play? And that's the fun part about like a really juicy wash is you can really play with it for a while. All right. And I feel like I want to do a little bit of the stem in a darker color. Okay, there. See here. Nice. Oh my gosh, the edges are so 
I've been dragging my sweater sleeve through it, but that's okay. All right, so now I feel like the bottom is pretty good. If I were to um, be doing this for something a little bit more profesh, um, <laughs> definitely make sure, look at how ratty these edges are. You see, it's like so messy, but um, I would definitely make sure it was a little bit more polished, but for now, for our purposes, um, I think that's totally fine. I'm really happy with the warmth and the coolness on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and blow dry this, and then we can add a little bit of that texture to the acorn cap. Okay, let me get a little blower. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So now for the acorn cap, just these little, these little V's and I'm using my smaller brush here. Oh gosh, didn't clean that one. It's blue. Just gonna get a little paper towel. Here we go. Okay. Let's try that again. So I'm just going to take my brush in these little V's kind of along the the top line, just add a little, little like upside down bird shape, you know, the little upside down V, just to give it a little bit of texture. Nothing fancy here. Just giving a sense of depth. That one's a little, a little big. It's nice and light. Again, if we were doing like a hyper-realism thing, we would be getting way in these nooks and crannies. But I think for our purposes today, here and now, this is just a nice little way to give a little extra detail to your painting without going bananas. And it looks like maybe this top layer wasn't yeah, it's not totally dry, but I kind of like how this, these little V's are interacting with this almost dry layer beneath. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, let's see. Yeah, I can dig it. Okay. So let's change it. I'm going to show you what I mean by, okay. Do you see how here the paint is kind of pushing against that line? Like you can see almost like an outline of the shape. That's how I know that the under layer is not quite dry. Um, here, let's see if you can see it better from here. Um, that's how I know the underlayer isn't quite dry because that is the wetness of the new paint pushing against the slightly almost dry edge of the underlayer of that previous wash that we did. And so that is giving um, a little bit of a bloom which we will go into more um, in later tutorials, but um, that's kind of what's happening there. So if that happens, let's just take it as a happy little accident. All right, I'm just adding a little detail to my stem. I think I might still want just a little bit more emphasis of this, a stronger emphasis of this cap shadow see. kind of want that a little darker. I'm adding just a little bit more blue. I'm imagining the sun is coming kind of from this angle here. 
Got a nice cap shadow and there we go. All right, just kind of evening that out. And that is our acorn. We could go, you know, it really is like a choose your own adventure situation. We could go like all day. I could take three years to paint an acorn. Um, but when we're talking about washes, um, it can be really great to do like one layer of wash if you're doing something quick, or we can do um, many layers of wash. But that is going to be the basic building block when you are painting. It's just basically a bunch of different washes coming together. Um, and that's how I like to break down my paintings is, okay, which wash is going where? So that is the lesson for today. We talked about a flat white or a flat, a flat white. Can you tell I need some coffee? <laughs> a flat wash, a gradient wash, a variegated wash. We painted this cute little acorn incorporating many of those skills. And thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to participate in the Fall for Watercolor Challenge, make sure you sign up with the link in my bio. Um, or it should be in the description below on the YouTube. If you'd like to revisit this, this should be available on YouTube replays. I am so excited to paint with you. Please let me know if you have any questions. My DMs are open. Um, I love getting a chance to share the joy of watercolor with you. And I will be back tomorrow and we'll be talking about water barriers and painting a pumpkin. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you on the interwebs. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye.